This segment is the second segment of Module 5b. This segment focuses on the first step of the SLO development process, gather and review available data. If you have not completed Segment 1, please exit this presentation and complete Segment 1 before returning to this segment. As you may remember from prior trainings, the SLO development process is composed of five steps. This module will walk you through the first four steps of this process so that by the end of this module, you will have a draft of a high-quality SLO. Ready? Let's begin. The first step of the SLO development process is to gather and review available data. During this step, we will complete the baseline and trend data and student population components of the SLO template. As you will remember from earlier modules, you will want to review both baseline data, data on your current student's performance, and trend data, data on how your former students performed in your course in prior years and or data on how your current students have performed over time. Most likely, you will not have all of this information available to you, but you should have enough information to help you identify student strengths and weaknesses. Examples of baseline data are listed in this slide. Baseline data can include current and prior years pre-assessment data, and of course achievement data from prior years, student portfolios, and work samples from prior years or the beginning of the course. In some cases, you also may want to examine student performance in a similar subject. For example, a Physics 1 teacher might look at mathematics scores to get a sense of students' familiarity with algebraic equations. Examining multiple sources of available data can give you a more complete picture of student performance and help you identify student strengths and weaknesses. For example, a review of prior years and of course achievement data may give you a broad sense of how poorly or well students did in the prerequisite course last year, but pre-assessment data can give you more information about their specific knowledge and skills in relation to your current course. In addition, you also will want to gather information about your students' context. Information contained in individualized education programs, IEPs, written education plans, 504 plans and other documents can provide additional information about student learning needs and the factors that might make it difficult for some students to reach typical growth targets. You will use this information in the student population section of your SLO. In addition to baseline data, you should gather and review trend data if they are available. Trend data can be data on how your former students performed in your course in prior years, or data on how your current students have performed over time. This information can be valuable for two reasons. First, it helps you anticipate which content and skills of your course may be more challenging for students to master. Second, it can help you gauge what sort of progress you might expect between the pre-assessment and post-assessment data for your current students, provided that you have this information available and your student population is similar. For example, if you taught an honors class last year and are teaching a remedial class this year, trend data will not be as useful as if you taught a mixed ability class last year and are teaching a mixed ability class again this year and will be using the same assessments. Trend data can also be information about your current group of students over time. For example, if you are a fifth grade teacher, you might have information about how your students scored on the Ohio Achievement Assessments in grades three and four and notice a trend that students score poorly in data analysis. If you haven't already analyzed your student data, you may want to pause in a few moments to do so. After your review, you will need to summarize your baseline data. This information will need to be entered into the baseline and trend data section of the SLO template. When analyzing your data, it is best to use both numbers and narrative. Tables can be useful in helping summarize your findings. For example, the table in this slide breaks down the results of the pre-assessment and shows the distribution of scores by two question types, multiple choice and free response. Another, perhaps more useful way to organize the data would be by topic or skill area. Summarizing the data in tables also can assist you in establishing growth targets when we reach that section of the SLO template. You also will need to identify your current students' strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind that if you only identify strengths or you only identify weaknesses, your SLO will not be approved because identification of both is required by the SLO template checklist used in approving SLOs. This is why breaking down information by topic or skill area can be important. If you have trend data on your current students, 
You may also be able to identify whether strengths and weaknesses tend to be persistent over time. For example, you might see that a group of students have consistently performed poorly in a skill over time. In addition, you also should determine where your students usually do well and where they struggle in your course based upon trend data. For example, the table on this slide summarizes student performance in a financial literacy course for the past three years. Based on this information, I could identify Unit 5 on investing and Unit 6 on credit and debit as areas where students in the past have struggled. Students tend to perform well on Unit 1, financial responsibility and decision making. This information can help me identify areas I might want to address in my SLO. At this point, please pause to analyze your data if you have not done so already. Keep in mind that you should be able to summarize your data as well as identify students' strengths and weaknesses after completing your review. Resume the presentation when you are ready to proceed. You should remember from prior trainings that the SLO template consists of seven components. Now that we have conducted an analysis of data, we can fill in the first component, baseline and trend data. Please turn now to your SLO template. This is available in Microsoft Word form on the ODE website and in handout 5B.1. Pause here and summarize your analysis in this section of the template. I mentioned earlier that you will be using the SLO template checklist to make sure you have met the minimum criteria for each component of the SLO. Please review the baseline and trend data component of your SLO to make sure that you can check off all of the applicable boxes. If you cannot, please revise this section before returning to the module. Please pause now to conduct your review. Then resume when you are ready to move on to the next component. After summarizing baseline and trend data, you will need to describe your students. Remember, however, that at least one of your SLOs must be a course-level SLO. Because this module is focusing on creating a course-level SLO, we can complete this step before reviewing content. However, if you are focusing on writing a targeted SLO, you would want to first determine the most essential learning for students and then determine which subgroup of students you will target in your SLO and the skills or content on which you will focus. Because this is a course level SLO, all of your students in the class or course will be included in the student population. In this section, you will need to specify the number of students in your class or course, the grade level of students, and any contextual factors that may impact growth. Identify how many students are special needs or gifted and list their area of identification. If this is a reading class and the student is identified as special needs or gifted in mathematics, it may still apply but not as strongly as if the student was identified in reading. In addition, please refer to the last box of the checklist under the student population section. This box would only be applicable if you and your administrator had agreed to exclude a subgroup of students from your SLO. If no subgroups were excluded from your SLO, you should explicitly state this so the approval committee knows it is not applicable to your SLO. For instance, in this example from a financial literacy SLO, the teacher specifies that 65 students in grades 9 through 12 are taking the course. The teacher also identifies the number of students taking advanced courses as well as students who have IEPs and 504 plans. This teacher also includes the identified areas for the students with special needs. Notice that the teacher does not include any specific student names or ID numbers in this example. It is critical that this component include a summary of important information that also protects the privacy of the students. You now can begin to enter information about your students into the SLO template. When completing this section, please keep in mind that protected information such as student names and student ID numbers should remain confidential. When completing this section, please be mindful of FERPA and HIPAA guidelines. You should not include student names in your SLO especially when talking about student disabilities. If your SLO will be reviewed by a team of educators, some whom are working in other buildings, please avoid sharing information that unnecessarily identifies students as you see in this example. In a moment, please pause to complete the student population portion of the SLO template. As you are writing, look at the SLO template checklist to make sure you are meeting the required criteria of these two components. Remember, 
Your SLO will likely be approved by a local committee as recommended by ODE. Therefore, as we write our SLOs, we need to include pertinent details even if they are well known to us as the classroom teacher. Because the committee members may not be as familiar with our classroom as we are, we need to be as clear and complete as possible. Resume the recording when you are ready to proceed. This concludes segment two. The next segment will focus on the second step of the SLO development process, determine the interval of instruction and identify content. When you are ready to proceed with module 5b, please open segment three.